Hello everyone, I'm Dr. D. Raj Lakshmi. I'm a final year resident from MNR Medical College in Hospital Sangareti. My paper topic is comparison of ultrasonography and MRI in the evaluation of rotator cuff injuries. Um, the background and introduction. Rotator cuff uh, disease is one of the most common causes of shoulder pain. With uh, addition of history and physical examination, evaluation of the patient with shoulder pain often involves assessment of the rotator cuff with a diagnostic test such as ultrasonography or MRI. Uh, previously, an arthrography was more commonly used, but however, it, it is a very invasive procedure. It comes with risk and discomfort, and it is very insensitive to partial tears, especially involving the superficial surface and the substance of the cuff. Hence the diagnosis uh, the making of the, hence the diagnosis of partial tears is important because many orthopedic surgeons will operate to relieve the impingement of the supraspinal test tendon before it progresses to full thickness there. Uh, this was possible because of MRI, uh, as it is it has a more key role in their diagnosis. Hence, it has become the gold standard for detecting both subtle and obvious internal derangement and assessing the overall joint structures. The aims and objectives of my study was to evaluate the role of MRI in the rotatory cuff injuries, the role of high resolution ultrasonography in the rotatory cuff injuries, and a clinical and a high resolution and the correlation between the clinical and a high resolution ultrasonography and MRI findings. Materials and methodology, the sample size was, about, was a minimum of 40 patients. Source of data, all the patients referred to MNR uh, Medical College Department of Radiology with the clinically suspected cuff rotatory cuff injuries were taken. An informed consent was uh, obtained okay, and a careful examination was done before the procedure. The inclusion criteria was all the patients with clinical suspicion of rotator cuff injuries and case of all age groups irrespective of the sex. Exclusion criteria, uh, the patient having history of claustrophobia, any metallic implants, cardiac pacemaker or metallic foreign body, which were the absolute contraindications of an MRI study, and also patients who was unwilling. A study method, it was a cross-sectional study. The technique and equipment, it was a hospital-based imaging done with 1.5 Tesla GE MR Cigna machine in the Department of Radio Diagnosis Seminar Medical College. Using a shoulder coil, uh, coil the following sequences were obtained. It, uh, coronal oblique T1-weighted proton density-weighted image was done, which was a fast uh, spin sequence. Coronal oblique fat, fat suppress sequence was done. Sugital oblique T2-weighted with or without fat suppression. Axial T2-weighted gradient echo sequence axial PDW with or without fat suppression, and the field of view was 15, 14 to 16 centimeters with slice thickness of 2 to 3 mm and a matrix of 512 into 512. Technique and equipment. Uh, for the ultrasonography, we used a GE Logic Q F6 uh, machine, which was equipped with a linear probe with frequency of 6 to 12 megahertz. The patient position, uh, it varies from institutions to in institutions. However, I used uh, a revolving stool and the patient was seated comfortably, and the height of the patient's stool was adjusted to be ergonomically compatible for the scan performance. Uh, coming to the results, uh, my first table shows the age distribution of the studies, and we realized that about 52.5%, the highest percentage, were of the age group less than 40 years. Next uh, table two, it shows us uh, the range of movements in subjects with rotary cuff injuries. About 65% of the patients had a decreased uh, range of movements. Uh, table 3, sex distribution of subjects. Uh, of the 40 patients studied, uh, 26 patients were uh, male and 14 were female. The mean, age fem uh, the mean age among the female was 42, plus or minus 1.98, and the mean age among the males was 46, plus or minus 2.2 in our study of rotatory cuff injuries. That's about 65% of uh, patients were males. Uh, table 4, it is a patient with history of trauma. Uh, in our study, about 15% of the patients had history of trauma. Uh, that is about six subjects. Next, we so see the association between dominant side and the affected side. In our study, majority were right-handed subjects, about 82.5%, uh, and 17.5% were left-handed subjects. All the seven left-handers had rotary cuff injuries on the left side, and about 80% of the right-hander had injuries on the right side. The association was statistically significant. Uh, table 6, we see the ultrasound findings in tendon injuries. In ultrasound, it is observed that 15 patients had tendon tear of the supraspinatus muscle, 12 patients had infraspinatus muscle, 3 patients had subscapularis tear, and 2 patients had biceps tendon tear, and there was no tear in teres minor. 2 patients had tendinosis of supraspinatus muscle, and 3 patients had tendinosis of the infraspinatus muscle, and 1 patient had tendinosis of the subscapularis. This, was, this is the same data expressed in percentages and uh, 
uh, graphical representation. Next, we have MRI findings in tendon injuries. Uh, it was observed that 23 patients had tendon uh, lesions of supraspinatus muscle, five patients had uh, infraspinatus tear, three patients had subscapularis tear, uh, and there was no tear in teres minor, and two patients had biceps tendon tear. Two patients had tendinosis of the supraspinatus muscle, and one patient had tendinosis of the subscapularis muscle. This is the, uh, table 10 is the same MRI findings uh, expressed in percentages and graphical representation. Next, statistical measures of the ultrasonography findings in comparison with the MRI findings in tendon injuries. Uh, ultrasound findings in comparison to MRI findings show the sensitivity of the ultrasound was low in detecting the tendon injuries at all sites. High sensitivity was observed for subscapularis and biceps tendon injuries. Specificity was 100% at all the sites except infraspinatus, which was 69%. Diagnostic accuracy was low in supraspinatus and infraspinatus tear and highest for subscapularis and biceps tendon injuries. The agreement between the uh, ultrasound and MRI findings was measured by Kappa, and the highest agreement was observed for subscapularis tears. Next, we the statistical measures of ultrasound uh, findings in comparison uh, in detecting the peri-bicipital uh, tendon fluid. Uh, MRI showed 12 patients um, positive for uh, peritendinous fluid out of uh, out of the patients, whereas ultrasound showed uh, out of 40, and ultrasound detected nine out of those 40. And uh, the three were not detected in these uh, and did not detect three cases. There was a significant association between ultrasound and MRI findings. MRI was better in detecting the peri uh, bicipital tendon fluid than ultrasonography. Next, we see the association between ultrasound findings and MRI findings in detecting the peri bicipital tendon fluid uh, sensitivity, specificity, positive predictive value, negative predictive value, and diagnostic accuracy, where the p value was less than 0 0.01 according to G, uh, G square test. There was 75% sensitivity, 100% specificity, 100% po uh, positive predictive value, 90% uh, NPV, and the diagnostic accuracy was 0 0.925. Next, we see the association between ultrasound findings and MRI findings in detecting the sub uh, acromion and sub deltoid bursal fluid. MRI showed 10 positive for the bursal fluid out of 40, whereas ultrasound detected all the cases of uh, sub, uh, sub acromial and sub deltoid bursal fluid. There was significant association between ultrasonography and MRI findings, that is, USG was equivalent to MRI in detecting it. We have a diagnostic accuracy of 1% and a 100% sensitivity specificity positive predictive value and a negative predictive value. Next, we see the association between ultrasound findings and MRI findings in detecting the joint effusion. Uh, MRI showed 23 positive for joint effusion out of 40, whereas ultras, uh, USG detected uh, 18 and did not detect uh, the, uh, joint effusion in about five cases. There was significant association between USG and MRI findings. However, MRI was better. Uh, we see a 78% sensitivity, 100% specificity, 100% uh, positive predictive value, 77% negative predictive value, and a diagnostic accuracy of 0 0.875. Next, we see uh, the acromium type. Majority of the type of acromium was 67.5% uh, had type 2 acromium, 15% had type 3, 10% had type 1, and 75 had type 4. Uh, you also see a graphical representation of the same. Table 18 are MRI findings of a labral tear. Uh, in our study, about only 12.5% had associated labral tears. That is about five uh, subjects. Next, we see the comparison between the MRI diagnosis with the ultrasound diagnosis. In our study, it was observed that ultrasound had 66.67% sensitivity, 100% specificity, 100% uh, positive predictive value, 42.86% negative predictive value, and a 73.33% diagnostic accuracy in diagnosing the rotatory cuff injuries. Kappa uh, agreement between the USGA and MRI was 0.44, that is fair agreement. Table 20, we have the statistical measures of the final diagnosis in comparison of ultrasonography in comparison to MRI. 100% specificity and product, uh, positive predictive value, 75% sensitivity, 50% negative predictive value, and a diagno diagnostic accuracy of 0 0.8. The standard reference for diagnosis was taken as MRI in our study. When USG findings were compared with MRI, it was observed the diagnostic accuracy of ultrasonography was significant in comparison to MRI. The sensitivity, specificity, PPV, and NPV, as I already mentioned, and the diagnostic accuracy was 80%. Here we have images of uh, T2 coronal fat suppressed images where you see a full thickness tear 
of the supraspinatus tendon at its insertion with retraction of pipers. And you see a hypoechoic area in the ultrasound image, which shows the site of supraspinatus tendon insertion. Here we have a G, uh, GRE axial uh, MRI image shows an evolution here of the subscapularis tendon with the dislocation of the biceps tendon and ultrasound shows full thickness uh, tear of the subscapularis tendon. Next, we have T1 coronal uh, oblique MRI and ultrasound images of the tendinosis of the supraspinatus muscle here. You can see the uh, altered echogenicity here and a hyperintensity here. Uh, next, you see the ultrasound where a hypoechoic area on the articular surface of the supraspinatus tendon near its insertion and also a hyperintensity at the articular aspect of the supraspinatus tendon near its insertion. My study conclusion, in our study, most commonly involved tendon was supraspinatus, followed by subscapularis and then infraspinatus, with teres minor and biceps tendon least commonly affected. And among the rotator cuff tears, partial tears were about 57.5%, and they were more common than a full thickness tear. Among the partial tear, most common was with the articular surface tears in about 75%, followed by bursal tears in 10%, and intrasubstance tear in 10%. The age of the patient with rotary cuff disorders ranged between 23 to 62 years with a mean of 45 plus or minus 2.06 years with males affected more than females. Dominant arm about 97% affected more than the non-dominant arm with all of the cases showing history of trauma with rotary cuff injuries, depicting the fact that increasing age, male gender, dominant arm and history of trauma were predisposing factors for rotary cuff tears. Patients with decreased range of movement had rotatory cuff tears in about 65% of all the cases, depicting the fact that decreased range of motion is a manifestation of the tear. In our study, 57.5% of the patients with joint effusion and 45% of the patients with bursal fluid showed tears in the cuff tendon, depicting the fact the presence of joint effusion or bursal fluid is a marker of rotatory cuff tears. In our study, most common acromium type was type 2 followed by type 3 combined with 70% of these patients showing rotatory cuff tears. Thus, in this study, the rotatory cuff tears were more common in type 2 and type 3 acromion. MRI is more sensitive than ultrasound for detecting the peri-bicipital tendon fluid, joint effusion, sub uh, subdeltoid, subacromial, subcoracoid bursal fluid impingement. Labral tears, acromion type, and adjacent bone changes were detected only by MRI. And in our study, ultrasound had a sensitivity of 75%, specificity of 100%, positive predictive value of 100%, negative predictive value of 50%, and diagnostic accuracy of 80%, and a kappa degree of agreement of 0.37. These results suggest that the positive sonographic reading is more reliable than a negative one, and is still less reliable in detecting rotatory cuff tears than MRI, which has the highest diagnostic accuracy. These are the references for my study. Thank you.